Welcome to the best sports betting podcast, where we'll talk about reviews, previews, tips, and all things betting related. Brought to you by bestsportsbetting.co.za. Now, on to our hosts. How's it, Panthers? Welcome to the best sports betting podcast, where we're going to talk about some of the latest sporting events, betting news, and more. With me, as always, is Simon. Simon, how was your weekend? Uh, getting rather chilly down here in the Cape? Yes, absolutely. Very cold. I was um, actually spent a weekend up in Citrus Style, uh, which was probably a little bit, a little bit more chilly than than Cape Town proper. But um, it was, yeah, it was a pity not to be able to, uh, you know, we were in a really nice place with a swimming pool and so on, and not be able, really be able to use it. But it was very nice just to get away from the the buzz of the city. Yeah, and then those cold circumstances, best just to put your your dop in the swimming pool, keep it cool, <laughs> you know, save on the on the fridge space. <laughs> there we go. Make the, make the best use out of everything you have. But uh, yeah, so not, not much going on in the, the betting world. I mean, we we had some, some drama last week with uh, SB Tech, which are a software provider. They went down in South Africa. I can't go into too much detail because I don't know enough of the details, but I do know it affected uh, Bet.coza, Spot on Bet, Palace Bet, those, those bookmakers who are using SB Tech. Very nice software. Uh, unfortunately, they did go down. Uh, it wasn't a hack, as I understand it. I think it was just a, a connection issue that was only affecting South Africa. Fortunately, that was resolved pretty quickly. And what was nice to see is that that Bet.coza came out straight away and said, hey, listen, we've got a problem. If you want to access our site, you're probably going to need to use a VPN. Uh, we're working on it. So it's a stark contrast to, to super bets and there, yeah. you know, hey, we're going down for some maintenance for a week. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You know, we'll be back soon, Absolutely. guys, and then we're going to delete that because, you know, people are complaining too much. But anyway, yeah, yeah, and, and not uh, not too much going on for for us in the in the, in the world of soccer either, football. I mean, we had a, a cracker on Friday in Newcastle versus City where we fancied both teams to score. Um, yeah. I actually wanted to take an in-play bet on that one. I was sitting, and I think it was 15 minutes or something, 10 minutes into the game, and I was on Palace bet. And I, I had some some funds in that account. And I'm like, shit, I really feel like putting on over two and a half. Uh, I think the price had just gone too closer to even or something like that. And I just didn't pull the trigger. Something else distracted me. And uh, yeah, but 4-3 uh, at the end there. Cracking entertainment, I've got to say, when two teams play with uh, kind of nothing to play for. I mean, City have won the, won the league, of course. And United, uh, Newcastle rather, are, are safe. So uh, nothing on the line there. And it kind of showed in the game. Pretty, pretty entertaining display. Yeah, I mean, yeah. As, as I said, we, we we both like both teams to score there, and I think that was a done deal. On I think the 38th minute, both teams had had already scored. I often find um, when I get these bets right, they kind of absolutely ship in, and mm. both teams both teams either 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 both score in the first half, or there's like a ridiculous scoreline, like there was on Friday, you know, four um, three to City. So yeah, it was it was a very entertaining match, and I think. Um, an absolute highlight was um, Ferran Torres's goal. I think it was his second for Man City, um, which was just—I mean, it was brilliant. It was like a half bicycle, half kung fu kick. Um, brilliant, brilliant strike. Um, I mean, I heard of a lot. Of, I saw a lot of people on social media saying, "Oh, what a fluke," and so on. But you know, if you look at it, I mean, the guy is very, very talented. But I think it was a percentage shot. You know, he knew mm. there was—it was a good possibility he would miss it, but. You know, he can. He happened to connect the spot on, and ended up obviously at the Newcastle net. I mean, that was that's not something you do by accident. No. Um, it was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant to watch. But yeah, other than that, I mean, Saturday was was quite a dull card. I'm glad there was a bit of, a bit of tennis in Rome at least. But yeah, Sunday Sunday was uh, was disappointing for me because I, I like Wolves there against the Spurs, chance. right? Yeah, yeah, against Spurs, and that ended up you know two 0 to 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 uh, Tottenham there. So. Um, I guess the biggest upset of the weekend, though, would probably be, um, you know, relegated Sheffield beating yes, Everton. Yes, I've got that down here as my literally the only other thing I want to talk about over the weekend. <laughs> Everton, uh, you know, I probably had a bet on them somewhere in an, accumula- in an accumulator over the weekend, which is which is why they would have lost to Sheffield there. Eh? And what yeah, the hell's su- going on there? <laughs> well, I suppose as well as you think, I mean, Sheffield literally have nothing to play for. They were relegated about five weeks ago, so they really have nothing left to play for. Um, I mean, Everton can still qualify for the Europa League so I think that um, you know not that would have been in Everton would have been in a lot of punters um, multi-bets for yeah, the reason it's, it's a banker at home it, it, so, it simply is really yeah one team one team with everything to play for another team with nothing to play for big gulf in class between the two so yeah a big surprise result there 
Yeah, and then there's also the uh, the the West Ham game, which I was uh, somewhat surprised about, but not uh, not 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 too exciting. They are kind of one of those teams that have hit their heights, and now they've uh, started to drop with their their one one all draw against Brighton, another team you'd you'd expect them to to pick up a, a yeah. result. I mean, they were playing away from home, but you know it's one of those teams that I've been keeping a, a close eye on, looking for value, uh, and I think the value from them has kind of slipped away with their with their form. But on to the FA Cup, we forgot to speak about it in last week's podcast. However, I, I'm just going to say it. I think these 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 cups have become a joke. Uh, you know, it used to be the the League Cup. I used to think was a joke, uh, which is now an even bigger joke. And the FA Cup has also just become a, a shadow of its former glory. I mean, they announced the team sheet and the, the Chelsea keeper who hadn't played in I don't know how God knows how many long games, t- a decade or something since he played for Chelsea, or something ridiculous. And um, yeah, they've just they just put out second string teams, and yeah, I mean, look, yeah, con- congrats to Leicester for picking up a win. There, I didn't didn't think they'd pick up the win. Uh, Chelsea all over the show at the moment, though. Yeah, I must admit, I didn't catch a single minute of of the FA Cup final. Um, but um, I'm I'm actually delighted for Leicester. I think um, you know none of us will obviously ever forget when they, when they won the Premier League in in 2016 at odds of five thousand to one. Um, which, 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 by the way, is the biggest odds ever for a single event to ever come in in the history of Crazy. sport, and by and by a long way, by a very long way. Um, but uh, so I, I always have a, a soft place in my heart. But um, going back to the game, I mean, based on what I saw, as I said, I, I didn't see it, but I saw the highlights and looking at the stat sheet, it looked like pl- Chelsea had plenty of. Chances. Oh yeah, it was all about Chelsea. Yeah, it was all Chelsea yeah, that, <laughs> that, that they couldn't convert. Um, but you know, Schmeichel made three good saves for Leicester City. And um, uh, yeah, a cracking goal by by Telemans, the Belgian, was I guess the difference between the two teams in the end. But uh, yeah, obviously not uh, not not a great result for Chelsea. But yeah, I, I'm I'm glad to see Leicester win some more silverware. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, it's, it's it's a big deal for them, uh, and, and that that gives them qualification into the Europa League. I think. Uh, well, by... they, I mean, yeah, exactly. And, and and never mind the fact that they're sitting in the Champions League places as it is. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah, that that race is is really heating up with, uh, mm. with Liverpool picking up a yeah a win the other day. So you know it's going to be interesting to see what happens there with not too much too much going on. But we might as well jump straight into the the upcoming football. Um, really not an exciting weekend. We've got Chelsea taking on Leicester again. If you want to, if you fancy uh, yeah. a rematch, a rematch, which I think Chelsea. I mean, surely they take this one. This time playing at home, uh, we've got City taking on Brighton. Brighton in another nothing game. Uh, I don't know. I just there's just not too much to get really get excited about. You got New- Newcastle taking on Sheffield. Newcastle, fifteen to twenty to beat Sheffield United. Uh, we've got Spurs five to ten to beat Aston Villa. Uh, yeah, I mean even even Arsenal five to ten away from home against Crystal Palace tomorrow. Crazy. Yeah, I agree. It, it it doesn't look like the most exciting card. Um, there is, funny enough though, the the I'm going to go back to the well here with Man City and Brighton. I uh, was right on the on the both teams to score there, and I think I can't help but think that that City are going to they're going to take their foot off the gas slightly, and I think they really have. Uh, they've obviously got the EPL trophy in the bag, but but you know even more than that, Brighton have, have shown have shown that they that they can score goals at home. Um, and uh, you can get the, the both teams to score there at a slightly smaller price than there was last week against Newcastle, but still nine to ten with Sporting Bet. Um, obviously, Brighton at home again. So yeah, um, I, I think I think that that will probably be my my EPL bet of the week. Um, another one that does nine to ten, you say? Nine to ten, yeah. You're getting, you're getting a nice even money over at Bet.coza. Oh well, there you go. Yeah. Even better. Ten percent more. <laughs> yeah, sure. And then another one that I so the second the second game week so you've got a double slate uh, is on Sunday and that's obviously when all the teams play in the final week mm, um, mm. and uh, the bet I like there I think is is Liverpool um, on the man on the minus one handicap at Crystal Palace against Crystal Palace at least we don't have any odds for this um, so we'll have to wait until probably Thursday morning for those to be posted but I expect that'll also be around nine to ten I just think Liverpool are going to throw everything at this they obviously want to try and put Chelsea you know to the post for for the Champions League places and I, I i i fancy liverpool to win this two or three or even four nil um so i think uh as i said no odds up yet but i, I fancy liverpool to finish strong um and, and really make a go at those champions league places so yeah both teams to score in uh in, in city brighton and liverpool minus one in the handicap would be would be my picks for for this epl week 
So Liverpool could potentially make the Champions League uh, unless... What, what happens if Liverpool finish fifth and Chelsea win the Champions League? Does that... Uh, I can't quite remember. What happens with that spot? Does it does it get moved to the fifth place team or... Yeah, as far as I remember, that's right, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm, just, I mean, I'm not too sure, but I mean, it's quite a, quite an interesting... Mm. A lot Dynamic. of permutations and stuff like that mm. coming up for for these uh, for that Champions League spot and a lot of what ifs. I think City are the only one that really doesn't give a shit in the sense of you right. know they've qualified United as well for the yeah. for, for yeah. the Champions League. Um, but uh, I, I think I'm, I'm glad it's, cra- it's it's heating up. But it's it's interesting that Liverpool, who who won the league, are, are struggling for Champions League places. And I know it's very late in the season to be talking about this, but. Uh, yeah, you know, you you have to wonder what's going on there, and we've got we've got Leicester that could potentially. Well, I mean, they should be safe to to hold on to that third spot. I think um, so. I think so. They, yeah, they're, 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 they should they should hold it. I mean, they got they got they they kind of what three points off Liverpool, who are in fifth place. Um, so they are playing so, Chelsea. I, uh, I, I, the reason I mean, I fancy I fancy Liverpool to pip Chelsea um, because of the fact that. Liverpool have got have got a home game against Palace, mm. and and Chelsea are going to play away against Villa. Well, playing away against Villa can be a tricky prospect. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my thinking there. But um, it 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 will be pretty close. It's just a pity, as a, as we mentioned last week, I think that there's just no relegation battle. But um, at least the top four is still up for up for grabs. Yeah, and up until uh, you know a couple of weeks ago, we had West Ham also in contention for that uh, that Champions League spot, and they've just fallen off now. Now five points behind Chelsea. Yeah. So yeah, Arsenal languishing in ninth. I don't think they're ever going to see uh, European <laughs> European competition for a, for a, for a, for a while at least. Um, yeah. But but yeah, let's jump over to some 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 other sports now, and there is the French Open taking place pretty soon, Simon. Yes, that's right. So that's coming up um, in well, a week and a half's time now. Um, so I just thought I'd just recap a bit of the clay court um, season so far. Um, obviously, uh, in the last month or so, um, there have only been clay court tournaments, which um, you know is, is always the build-up to the French Open or what some people call Roland Garros, um, which is the only Grand Slam which is played on, on the surface. Um, so there's one more tournament in Lyon um, this week before the French Open starts the week after. Um, so, I mean, Rafa Nadal won in Barcelona a few weeks back, and then he won this weekend in Rome. So he's coming into some some good form leading up to up to. I mean, his his basically his wheelhouse. This is his Grand Slam that he's won, you know, more than any other player by a long shot. Um, I mean, he he not often, but he has been known to win every single tournament going up to the to 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 uh, to France. So you know, he's I wouldn't say he's in the best form of his life, but he's certainly playing pretty well, which obviously isn't isn't the best news for punters because it's it's hard to bet against him. You yeah. Know, when he, when he's feeling it on the clay, I mean, he's he's as short as eight to ten with some bookies. To yeah, I'm looking open. at that now. I'm looking over on dot co's and they're getting zero point eight three, so pretty yeah, much spot on. Yeah, there. yeah. I mean, the biggest price you're gonna get is probably around even money. So yeah, it gives you an idea of just how how plucky the bookies are feeling about his chances. Um, but I'll 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 do a full uh, review for the French Open on the podcast next week um, and share some picks. But it'll be interesting to see Roger Federer. He's obviously not the best court. Uh, clay court player but he'll be making a return after after injury um at the french so it'll be good to see him back in action again and see how he fares but uh yeah we'll chat more about the french open next week little little stab on uh Rublev, i'm hoping <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> possibly <laughs> and then we also have some uh while we're in europe we've got the the uh f1 monaco coming up i've been watching lots of <laughs> lots of programs about luxury yachts for some reason simon not that i i can afford uh, one and they're all they're all sitting berthed in Monaco, so it's a beautiful city. And how nice would it be to have a, a luxury yacht worth uh, you know ten twenty million dollars and just sit there and, and enjoy the F one from well exactly you know, I mean, from, from from your boat eh? exactly well that's that's kind of the synonymous scene of Monaco is you know is, is uh, the rich and famous sitting on their boats on their boats like drinking champagne and watching the Grand Prix you know so and, and, yeah and, I mean, and they is... I'll be sitting in my rowboat drinking pups up but, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is this is without a doubt the most prestigious um, event, the, you know, on, on the F1 calendar. Um, you know, we talk we're talking week after week about how hard it is to sort of find a way into this betting market at the moment. Um, it's very difficult. You know, if you 
Um, I do have, you know, I think just just one bit of advice though, or a strategy, if you will, that you could potentially use is, you know, if if you do want to bet on Hamilton of Verstappen, I think the best way to go about it is to bet on Hamilton before qualifying, mm-hmm. uh, when his odds are sort of even or just over even, and then conversely wait after qualifying to bet on Verstappen mm-hmm. and hope he doesn't get pole. Mm-hmm. So, because if if you wait after 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 qualifying for Stappen and he doesn't get pole, say he finishes in second or third or heaven forbid fourth, um, you know he he sh- you should get odds of around five to two, so three point five or bigger, uh, which is much better than backing him before qualifying at like thirteen to ten. Because when you're backing him at thirteen to ten before qualifying, you know Hamilton can do anything. Yeah. So it, it's just so that would be my approach to this. You know, if if you want to back one of those two drivers, which is obviously never a bad call, rather back yeah you know, back back Hamilton before qualifying and back Verstappen after qualifying. Just give you a, 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 a little bit more value. But yeah, just talking about this event in general, I'll keep the preview quite short. But um, you know, yeah, obviously Mon- Monaco, um, famous famous Grand Prix, one of the oldest. As I said, you won't you won't uh, see any shortage of money being thrown around at the event with yachts and, and people watching from boats and all sorts of things. But it's also um, Charles Leclerc's home Grand Prix, um, and he I think he looks the most promising driver outside of those top two um, out of Verstappen and Hamilton at the moment. He's twenty one to one to win. Now, obviously, winning is 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 quite a stretch. Mm. The odds the odds for Leclerc making the podium haven't been posted yet, or well, not not at least when when cool. I wrote so. Right. Can't we work that out from the price though? Yeah, right. it, sh- it look it should be. I would imagine it would be somewhere around two to one, or maybe a little bit bigger than that. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm, th- I'm thinking between like three and five. Maybe five. Yeah, it, it'll be shorter than five. Um, but it'll be somewhere. It should be. It should be over two to one. So, I think um, you know the, the odds for him making the podium will be around there, and I think that's probably where I would look. I mean, as I said, it's not just the fact that it's his home Grand Prix. I think he is probably the best driver out of those two. The Ferrari is actually proving to be a decent car so far. Um, it's it's not up there with the Red Bull and Hamilton, but it's probably a close third. The McLaren, the McLaren in testing seem to be better than the Ferrari, but the Ferrari is actually proving to be pretty good. So I think that would be my outside. But again, um, it's obviously going to be very hard to beat Hamilton and Verstappen in this race. Yeah, just looking at the prices with uh, 1.05 on Hamilton and 1.3 on Verstappen, and I think it's just going to be another win for Hamilton, uh, to be honest. And I think uh, yeah, I'm, as I, I said, have my first bet this year on F1 yeah, on Hamilton. Well, if, if you fancy him, take him now. Don't wait till qualifying, as I said. And if you if if you want to take up a stab on Verstappen, wait for him to qualify and hope that he doesn't qualify in mm. pole position. Obviously, if he qualifies in qual- pole position, he's going to be over even money but if he doesn't he's still got a very good chance of overtaking Hamilton from from second or third place so that's kind of your ideal scenario if you want to back Verstappen is is you know hope that he doesn't qualify in pole position and and back him back him so you're him. basically just waiting for the best possible possible price you know according yeah. to to what what should happen uh, yes so so that's that's a, it's a good strategy to take it's a nice one that I used to do with with, with NFL and, and live in play games as well Unfortunately, if, with live games, it just takes up too much time to to mm. kind of pursue these days. Uh, then there's also some some golf coming up, Simon. We've got the USPGA Championship. That's uh, what taking place yeah. this, is it this weekend. Uh, yes, it is. It starts on Thursday. Thursday so yes, that's, yeah. yeah, so second second golf major of the year. Gosh, these these tournaments just seem to be coming thick and thin. Obviously, because of the you know they, they were being moved around last season because of COVID. So this one's being played at uh, Kiowa Island in South Carolina, which is actually not too far from where I lived uh, until about six months ago. Um, and it's the longest course on the PGA Tour. I mean, it's it's a monster. And as you can imagine, it's being a Lynx course, um, you know, it's right on the ocean. The wind picks up there, and it can be can be hellishly hard to play. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of the golf golf pundits this week are talking a lot about you know the european players being more suited than the americans to this course um because it's very similar to mm. courses you'll find in places like ireland scotland, and scotland yeah. uh, much more than in the united states but um just one thing to think about when when maybe looking you know for for a bet in this is the course might be incredibly long but the fairways are relatively narrow so driving accuracy is also very important so you know you might not want to take a bomber like 
Bryson DeChambeau, who can absolutely just like knock the skin off the ball because, you know, his driving accuracy is probably not, it's, it's about the, the top 50 only. So, you know, he, he could land up in a lot of trouble around here if he doesn't hit enough fairways. Um, looking at the betting market, McElroy is the favorite. That's he won, he, crazy short. <laughs> yeah, he won it. He won it at, at Wells Fargo at Quail Hollow two weeks back. Um, is he in? Is he in form? He has picked up some form. Yeah, he, he is. He is in a bit of form, but he is just oh man. He's on my no bet list because he's so unreliable mm. and he's always too short. He, you know, he he he. People love him, and they just bet him blindly. And as soon as he does actually start playing well, then his odds are just ridiculous. Oh, they just yeah, they just drop completely. Like I mean, I mean I, what was he for the? He was he was pretty far out for the Masters, but even then he wasn't he wasn't. Yeah. Like oh well, he, I, think, I think he was second, second or third favorite. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. So. Uh, he just, um, I do, I really like him as a golfer and as a person, but he's just so hard to back because mm. he, he's just such a fan favorite. But um, I'm going to go for a European this week. As I said, a lot of talk around um, this course is being more more suited to the Europeans, and I, I agree with that. Um, I'm going to go with Victor Hovland, and his odds are on 19 to 1, where I was looking, I can't remember exactly where that was, which is which is a lot shorter than, than he has been this season, but I think he's got so much going for him. Um, it, it makes perfect sense to me. He plays very well in the wind. He's played plenty of these types of courses on the European Tour. So this is a very much more of a European Tour course, even though it's, it's obviously a, page, a PGA Championship. Um, and he's also coming into some fantastic form. So I really like him. A slightly longer shot who I also fancy is um, Abram Anser at 50 to 1. And he's just playing like an absolute demon at the moment. And he also looks very sort, suited to to the conditions at Kiowa Island. So, yeah, those are, those would be my two picks. But, yeah, as I said, I, I, can't, I can't back McElroy at those prices. And I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't make the cut because that's that's what McElroy does. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it will be interesting. It will be an interesting weekend, though, and I look forward to it. Yeah, I'm just looking at the prices, and I'm I'm really not inspired by these prices at all. And I, I'm looking at the gap, you know, that that kind of gap between twenty to one and kind of fifty to one, and there's not a whole lot in there that that kind of yeah maybe wool. I don't know, Zalatoris like yeah forty I mean, to one. I, mm. It's it's the biggest price I've seen Dustin Johnson in a while. I saw him at yes. nineteen to one. I uh, again like uh, you know that's somebody he's coming who, off an injury though. Uh, he's coming off an injury correct yeah um so it's uh look i'm not saying that that's that that price is necessarily incorrect but uh it's it's, it's it becomes very tempting when a player like dustin johnson who can go off as short as like seven to one at a tournament like this yeah you know it's going off at 20 so but it's, it's obviously always a risk but yeah i'm looking looking forward to it it should be it should be a very difficult course um it'll play a lot more like a u.s open i think and uh it'll be interesting if the wind picks up it's gonna get it's going to get very interesting out there. All right, great. So lots, lots of other sports coming up this weekend. As I said, we've got some, some PGA, we've got the Grand Prix, we've got some tennis, and then of course the kind of, uh, or how would I call it, the, the the curtain closer for the Premier League, and uh, then we'll be off to the Champions League, which which should be a cracker towards the end of the month, and then it should be Euros time. Um, I mean, I'm I, I'm still not sure what's going on with the Euros. I, we know they're taking place, but there's been surprisingly little talk about it. Have have you have you caught anything on your side about it? Like, about, yeah, you know, other I mean, than the uh, obvious. Yeah, as you said, I, I do know it seems to be going ahead. There is very little talk around, considering it's it's pretty much around the corner now. Um, so that is quite surprising. But yeah, until you hear any different, I suppose you just got to assume it's happening. But as you said, it's just not the normal fanfare around it. Uh, as there is um, on, not at on, all. On, on other years, yeah. And then we also have the the same with the Lions tour. That that is now not going to have any spectators and is only going to take place in in Joburg and Cape Town. Uh, I mean, the Lions Tour comes around what what every twelve years. Um, yeah, so it's isn't just, eight or twelve years, something like that. It's just such a shame not to have have not to have spectators and you know allow spectators for what essentially is a tour. I mean, it's not it's not you know it's not it's not going to be the same watching watching a tour game on TV when there's no one in the stadium. Um, Absolutely. So you know that's one that I, I think they maybe should have put off until next year, where they can have maybe half capacity or third, just something, you know, like yeah. But anyway, uh, hopefully, hopefully that's still going to be a cracker. And there's, there's there's lots of conversation going on about that on Twitter. Lots of guys saying that we're going to thrash them, and then guys saying uh, they're going to thrash us. So it's, it's actually quite an interesting conversation to follow over on Twitter. As Twitter can be, yeah. <laughs> a couple of local journeys or journalists uh, have uh, 
I think stuck their their noses in the in the, in the wrong bushes and have been taking a bit of a battering from from the pundits for it. But but yeah, but yeah, guys, that wraps up this episode of the Best Sports Betting Podcast. Simon and myself are going to head off to to Grand West. They've just launched a new sports betting bar. Well, the old sports betting bar has been redone, so we're going to go have a look at that and and see what it's like. And uh, yeah, we'll have a write up up on BSB about that. But guys, thanks for tuning into this episode, and we'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one, guys. Cheers. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to visit our site, Facebook, and Twitter pages. Let's go make some money.